SAT3 TI-84 program for your SAT math, we're going to answer about 40% of these questions of the SAT using it. So question number one, what is 10% of 470? So we're going to do, uh, sorry, not the algebra equations, we're going to do the percents here, number five. And then we're going to say A is B percent of C, that's option four. And then what is the A? So it's A is the unknown. And then so we're going to say, oh, the B is the percentage thing, so that's going to be 10. And then of C, so of 470. Okay, great. We got 47. Good. That's the answer there, B. Okay, let's go on to number two. Now, what we're going to have to do is do the uh, algebra, go to algebra equation, because it's an algebra equation. It's a solve equation, like this 4x plus 6 equals 18. So the 4x plus 6 is the left-hand side of the equation. For those unfamiliar, um, we use this key right here, where the uh, arrow is. It's just to the right of the alpha key on your keypad. So 4x plus 6 is the left-hand side of the equation. The right-hand side of the equation is 18. So we get x equals 3. And you might say, oh, well, they're all, all these are 4x's. So what we're going to do, we actually have a program for that as well. So algebra equations, and then uh, we're going to plug in the value, which is uh, option 4 on the algebra equation submenu. And we're going to say um, y equals uh, 4x. Okay. And then x is 3, because we just figured out x is 3, and then we get the answer is 12. So 4x equals 12 is our answer C. Very good. Now, um, on to number 4. Um, g of x equals x squared plus 29 for what value of x is g of x equal to 25. So they're both equal to each other. They're both g of x things. So we have x squared plus 9 equals 25. So it's going to be a quadratic, and we're going to do uh, a solve an x squared equation. Um, all these, like, warning, just, you know, be careful. Error means there's no solution. So uh, we have x squared plus 9 is the left-hand side of the equation, and the right-hand side would be 25. And it's going to give us uh, two values here, uh, two x values. For each value of x, and you could do negative 4 or 4. We'll go with the uh, 4 option here. They usually want the positives for those. So that's good. We've gotten three questions down of this test, which is fantastic. Okay, we keep on moving. And then question number seven. Function f is defined, uh, f of x equals 7x plus 2. What is the value of f of x when x equals 4? So again, what we're going to do, I'm going to go to algebra equations, and then we're going to uh, plug in a value. So that's option four. And then the y equals 7x plus 2. And then what is the x equal? Oh, x equals 4. Great. Okay, cool. We got 30. Fantastic. Okay, now... This next one, we have to do a little bit of work here. We have this y equals negative 3x. Let me copy that down here, y equals negative 3x. And if we make it like an ax plus by equals c, and I'll show you what I mean here um, for algebra equations, um, system of two equations, that's typically what it's called. Um, so we have ax plus by equals c. So what that means is we have to move the x's and y's to the left-hand side of the equation. So we have 3x plus y equals 0. So that's going to be one of my equations, and my other equations is the 4x plus y equals 15. So in this case, okay, and another little uh, note, we have 3 in front of the x, so that's going to be the coefficient of x, so that's a is 3. And then the b, if we don't have a number in front of a y value or an x value, we assume, sorry, we assume it's a 1. That doesn't look tidy. It doesn't look tidy either, but we're going to roll with it. Um, so b is 1 here, and then c is 0. And then dx plus ey equals f, so that's 4x plus, again, we're going to put a 1 because we don't have the coefficient in front of that y, we're going to assume it's a 1, equals 15. Okay, great. We get x equals 15, y is negative 45, so it's the value of x, 15. There we go. Now, for this next one, it's going to be more of a linear equation for number 11, and then I'll, I'll show you what we're going to do there. So we have this... Uh, equation or line of best fit, usually called an LSRL. So one thing I want to do is find out two points that are close to these corners here. Looks like we have this point is close to that corner, so it's close to 1, 9, because the x value is 1 and the y value is 9, so that's 1, 9. And then I'm going to go blue for this next point, and it looks like that's pretty close. And again, I'm saying close because we're not going to get exact stuff here. We're going to get approximations. So what we have is a linear equation with two points. So we're given two points there. And then the first point is one. We use that red point, one, nine. And then that blue point is three, five. 
and then we get everything we want. Uh, the slope intercept form is y equals negative 2x plus 11. So let me write that down. y equals negative 2x plus 11. So it's obviously not the y equals a positive x value, so we can eliminate those two off the bat. And then negative 2, well, it's close to negative 1.9. But then we have plus 11, so I'm going to go with option B there. That's the closest thing we have to what we estimated as this line of best fit for that linear equation. Okay. And then we keep on moving down. And then option, or sorry, question 13. So we have a little bit to do here. Uh, the Vivian bought party hats and cupcakes for $71. Each package of party hats costs $3. Each cupcake costs $1. So the party hats, right, we'll call that uh, uh, 3 times 10. So 3 times 10 plus, we'll say x times 1 equals 71. Okay, so... Um, it's something you could do by hand, but let's just go to the uh, algebra equations here, and then um, we'll solve an equation. So on uh, the left side is 3 times 10 plus x, right, equals, uh, let's see, party hats. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. And then 71, and we get x equals 41. So she bought uh, 41 cupcakes. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Let's keep moving on. And then, oh, number 18 is the next one. Looks like I've got another linear equation going on. So we're going to choose linear equations from the main menu. And then, again, we're going to go for that two-point thing. So this first red point, that will be uh, 0, comma 40. That's actually the y-intercept. And then we'll choose this blue point here, which looks like it's close to um, 60, 0. So again, we're given two points in that case. So that's going to be 0, 40. For a first point. The second point is 60, 0. And then we're given this, the y equals negative, looks like 2 thirds x plus 4. So in, initially I can eliminate a and c because those are positives. Now, being the SAT, it's a little tricky here. We have 2x plus 3y equals 120. We have to manipulate it just a little bit um, to get it going here. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. I know you can't multiply an equal sign, but just forgive me. We can do it fast here. 8x plus 12y equals 480. And then we match that equation B. So B is our answer there. Okay, cool. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay, and then we keep on going. And then uh, we have circle in the xy plane as diameter endpoints 2, 4, and 2, 14. So what we're going to do there is go to circles, and then we're going to do uh, equation of a circle, and then we're given uh, diameter endpoints there. So I'm going to choose option four, diameter endpoints, and then that's two, four is my first coordinate pair, and then two, 14 for my second coordinate pair, and then look, oh, we got radius is five, fantastic, got that answered, love it, love it, love this SAT3 math program. Okay, now... Um, number 25. Okay, that looks like a quadratic. Um, negative x squared plus 9x plus 100. So I'm going to write that here. y equals negative x squared plus 9x minus 100. Now again, um, what we're going to do is solve it in standard form, actually. Um, actually, no, no, no. We're going to go back. We're going to go, uh, let's see, was that quadratics? And then, oh, we want to solve intercept and max min. Sorry, we're going to choose option three. Um, so we have the coefficients here. And again, we have a negative x squared. We're going to assume that's a negative one x squared. Again, we don't have a number there, so we just assume it's a one. And then the b is nine. And then c is negative 100. Okay. And then it's it intersects y equals c at exactly one point. So one thing to know is this is a sad parabola. It opens downward because that negative x squared deal. So it intersects the line y equals c at one point. Oh, that must be that one point that's a max. So what is the maximum point? Oh, y equals negative 79.75. Okay, let me show you another little trick about this calculator. If I plug in um, negative 79.75 and press math, enter, enter, it renders it in a fraction form. So we have, oh, that's the same as saying negative 319 over four. 
Fantastic. We got a bunch of questions answered on this practice SAT from the College Board and look forward to working through the rest of this test and the other practice tests available at College Board. And I think you'll be amazed by what SAT 3, your TI-84 program can help you with. For sale at mcstutoring.com. Enjoy. I'll see you next time.